Hey all, Joe here with All Funnies and Games, and today we're picking back up on stick figure tutorials. So today's, I guess, lesson is going to be less of a tutorial and more of just a way to start thinking outside the box. So if you've done any kind of drawing background, or even just seen people who know what they're doing, you've probably seen people draw like this. They'll get a circle, they'll get some lines, they'll rough out the head, they'll draw the neck, they'll draw the shoulders, and they're just going to start getting the body parts all in position. And this is how a lot of art books will tell people to do it. And it gets the anatomy right, and it gets all the features about where you want them. And one thing, unfortunately, that it does is it kind of locks you into this way of thinking, of establishing this structure and then deciding what to do with it. And just based on this idea of this is how art's supposed to be done, I'll see people a lot who will decide where the word bubble goes and then try to add their text. And it kind of messes up. Hello, I'm very happy to see you today. Runs all over the place. It, it's, it's messy. And so what I would say is if you're going to write something, if you're going to get into the comic style, what, what a lot of people will tell you is decide what you're writing, write it where you want it, and then do the word bubble. But we're not just going to leave it at that. I would also say occasionally, and you don't have to do this every time, but occasionally play with deviating from this model, right? Because so far we've been making stick figures, and we've been making them better, and we've been giving them some width to the limbs, and we've been giving them faces. Every now and then decide what the most prominent feature in your drawing is going to be, and start with that, and just kind of see how the drawing progresses around it. So if you're going to have someone pointing an angry, accusing finger at someone, start with the finger, then put in the arm, then figure out how the body looks. You know, we'll have a downcast head looking up. You can just say, okay, I'm going to draw a person. And I want them to have big, crazy eyebrows. And little eyes. And a big grin. Alright, let's put a face around this. And this will kind of get you more comfortable with cartooning proportions. Because suddenly, you don't have to make it fit with a normal human anatomy. You can kind of deviate from that and make your faces feel a little bit more elastic and a little bit more vibrant. Just on this idea of start with the features that you think are going to be big, important features of the faces you're drawing. You know, if you want someone with a giant nose, start nose. Go nose first. You know, this is against the rules of art, but you know what? That's fine. Break the rules of art. Put that face how you want it and then draw the head around it. Try that out. If it's not comfortable for you, don't keep pursuing it. If you really just need this much structure to know exactly what you're doing, run with that structure. But before you decide this style isn't for you, play with it a little bit. I'd encourage you to do that. Just think about changing up the order that you're going to draw these body parts in. You don't have to do it in logical, let's construct a working anatomical body sequence. You can put these body parts together in any order and see what happens and see what works for you. For the comics that I do, for example, I found one of the best ways to consistently get the look about the same is to draw an eye, a nose, the other eye, the head, the mouth, the ear, and then start putting the hair in up top. It's rare for someone to tell you to go eye, then nose, then the other eye. That's not a normal sequence of putting together a face. But I found that it works for me. So play with this and find what works for you. All right, so hopefully this will help you out as you learn to draw and as you move forward into your own unique style. I'll see you on the next one.